frankly, this is where the, the, the moral conundrum for me as a historian lies. It is not on the use of the, uh, the atomic bomb, frankly, because many more Japanese were killed by conventional weapons. Um, but it was in the inability of the, the Japanese to consider their population. I've said many times that the Japanese were very good at killing and they were very good at killing their own people. And on this day in 1945, the US President Harry S. Truman said he would have no choice but to drop a third atomic bomb on Japan, this time on the capital Tokyo. The very next day, the Japanese surrendered unconditionally on what became VJ Day, ending the Second World War. Joining us now is Dr. Robert Lyman, research fellow, changing character of war center at Pembroke College in Oxford and author of A War of empires. Morning to you, Robert. Good morning. Um, so was it a question of the third, the third threat, having gone through on the previous two threats, was enough to convince Japan of the folly of continuing? There were a whole series of things going on at the time. Uh, the, the really interesting thing is, is that on the 10th of uh, August, so a few days before, a day after the second bomb had been dropped on Nagasaki, Hirohito, of course, the Emperor of Japan, had decided that uh, the game was up and it was time to surrender. And he sent a message to the Allies saying, yes, uh, we're happy to surrender, but only on um, my terms. So the, the background to all of this was the Potsdam Declaration, which had been made by the Allies on the 26th of July, which stated that Japan needed to surrender unconditionally. This was unacceptable. I'm afraid, to um, the Japanese and was unacceptable to Hirohito. So much of the conversation that was going on in Japan, in Tokyo itself, from the end of July through to the uh, 14th of August, was actually about the nature of the surrender, not whether Japan would surrender or not. Uh, that particular cliff edge had been reached um, with the, the first uh, bomb on Hiroshima on the 6th of of August. So surrender was inevitable, um, but the big issue, so far as the Japanese were concerned, were the terms. Uh, there were two very, very significant um, parties in Japan arguing about the nature of how the fight should continue. Uh, most Japanese politicians and uh, military commanders didn't want to surrender on American terms. They believed that they could surrender on a negotiated basis, much the same as they had achieved with the Russians in 1905, and they couldn't understand why uh, they would have to surrender unconditionally. Uh, uh, this was incredibly naive, of course. Well, uh, and yet this comes at the end of a, of a bloody war, and therefore was the, the ethics of having an argument about the type of surrender being pushed by... An, you know, a bomb of this mass destruction being used twice and a third threatened. Was that just seen as a corollary of a very long and painful and bloody war? Or was this seen as this 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 great ethical moment? And, uh, and, and how much, I, I can never quite work out how much outrage, you can imagine now the outrage would be considerable. What was the, what was the ethical response to this? You mean in Japan? Because, what, um, yeah. Yes, it's very interesting, actually. At the end of June, um, J Japan had entered this almost existential war, believing that they would uh, they would conquer Asia, and they had massively failed. Remember, Japan had begun this war as early as 1931 with its invasion of parts of, of China. We, we mustn't forget that. And over the period of time since 1931, about 20 million people had been killed as a result of Japanese military aggrandizement in Asia. And that's the uh, that's frankly the moral backdrop for me for yeah. the surrender in in, uh, in August 1945. So far as the um, the Japanese population were concerned, they were in hock to uh, the the emperor as the uh, divine sun god, and uh, he and the, the 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 war cabinet effectively made all the decisions with regard to the future of Japan. There were two competing um, arguments, as I've suggested. One, which was that held by a minority, in fact, only one member of the six person cabinet accepted this, that unconditional surrender was the only way to save Japanese. Everyone else argued for a, a continuation of the war and the sacrifice of many more millions of Japanese, okay. the population of 72 million. And frankly, this is where the, the, the moral conundrum for me as a historian lies. It is not on the use of the uh, the atomic bomb, frankly, because many more Japanese were killed by conventional weapons. Um, but it was in the inability of the, the Japanese to consider their population. I've said many times that the Japanese were very good at killing, and they were very good at killing their own people. That's such an and interesting... This, 
Yeah, I, 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 this, this long extension extension of a decision to surrender really meant that many more Japanese died. I understand that. Well, it's an interesting, really interesting argument, Dr. Robert Lyman. Thank you for joining us today, author of A War of Empires.